So in part one of this uh, of this tutorial, uh, I quickly whipped together this 3D drawing of a tiny house uh, framing. But you may have noticed that I was a bit sloppy in my uh, layout of uh, of the framing. Uh, so in this next um, in this next part, I'm going to clean it up and, and add the exterior sheathing. Uh, right here, what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the uh, the floor decking. Uh, layout and lining up my 2x4 studs based on um, that spacing. That way, uh, since I know that the ex exterior sheathing will also be 4 foot on center like that, um, I'm laying up my 2x4 uh, my so that they'll, they'll fall directly behind the seams of those exterior sheets of plywood. Uh, I'm also moving um, all the studs so that they're, they're all 2 feet on center. Um, so that the walls are evenly supported, uh, except around the windows, of course. So uh, I'll speed up the film now, and uh, and you can watch how fast this can go together. So uh, I'm going to start by colorizing all of the different, or coloring all the different uh, components, just because it makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, placing the uh, plywood sheathing. In, on the walls and uh, cutting, uh, cutting the spaces open for the wheel wells. Here I'm readjusting uh, where the window is going to go. And I'm actually making a little group of uh, 2x4s that will go around a window so I can copy and paste those later. And that's what I just did there. Copied and pasted. Cutting open the window openings in the sheathing. I'm heightening it, uh, each of the pieces of plywood to eight feet um, so that I know how much wood I have to work with. copied and pasted the wall and the sheathing so I don't have to redraw all of that. Notice a little error here in adjusting the floor framing to the correct length. Adjusting the floor framing again to uh, line up correctly with the sheathing above it. Now I'm moving some exterior sheathing to the end walls and adjusting their size. I'm centering it on the wall. I'm also adding these cleats to the bottom um, that should help um, attach the house to the trailer a little bit better. The idea is that they would be bolted directly to the, um, the metal of the trailer uh, so horizontally bolts would go through there and then that would allow you to um, very firmly affix the the wood wall uh, to the trailer or I should say the wood that's affixed to the trailer so um, I think that should make a much stronger um, connection here I'm adding some extra 2x4s there of course in the corners and adjusting the window um, so that uh, the bathroom will have enough room for a 36 by 36 shower. And now I'm adding a what will be a kitchen window. Changing the size from 2 by 4 to 2 by 3, doing the same thing in the bathroom. I'm going to make the door a little bit wider. 32 inches instead of 24, adding in the correct uh, framing into the corner. 
that wall doesn't need any more framing, uh, it's got plenty. Uh, just uh, cutting through the sheathing. Had to cut through the sheathing over here a little bit differently just because I couldn't get to it. I just cut a little hole, now I'm pushing the edges out. That's a handy trick. Now what I'm doing here, if you look up in the upper right, it looks like nothing's happening, but I'm adding layers. Um, so at this point, everything except the trailer was all in the same layer, which makes it a little bit harder to work with. So I'm adding uh, layers for each wall and each wall wall's sheathing. And in a moment, um, I also slowed down the playback quite a bit. Uh, in a moment, you'll be able to see me uh, assign each one of these objects uh, to the, the correct layer. This will allow me to turn off and on the different layers or the different components, um, which will make it easier to work on different parts of the model uh, because I can just hide them and get them out of my way. So I just selected camera, uh, the camera uh, front view, so I can I can turn the uh, the model uh, and look just at the front. It's just a handy way of getting to a certain perspective. Now I'm unchecking all of those layers, so they'll hide the object the moment that I assign them. The way I'm assigning them, you'll notice, is in the Entity Info window in the sidebar there. Um, is a little drop down for layer, and I'm just popping it into the layer that it belongs in. The reason that they're disappearing, like I said, is because I've unchecked the visible box uh, in the layers panel just above that. And here goes the last wall. Now when I'm doing, when I'm actually drawing, see the radio button on the left um, in that layers panel? I always leave it next to layer zero. Um, I, I try not to move it around too much because uh, it just gets confusing. What'll happen is uh, it'll auto assign whatever you're drawing to that layer, which can be a really handy tool, of course. Um, but the problem is that uh, it, it can it can also uh, help you uh, accidentally assign things to the wrong layer and, uh, and make your drawing um, very confusing uh, to work with. So here I'm just finishing up the, uh, the floor there. and those little cleats on the side. In the next video, um, I'll be going through uh, how to, uh, the, the loft framing and the roof framing and sheathing, um, and, uh, and then the end walls and the eaves. So that, the next video, the third video, will actually complete the, the rough framing for the whole house. Um, and then in the subsequent videos, I'll go into uh, the interior and, uh, and also how to turn this 3D drawing into 2D plans.